This video is going to go through one possible approach to creating families to provide for parametric control over the orientation and position of MEP connectors in the project. So as you may be aware, we don't have control over the visibility state of connectors as we do with 3D geometry and Revit. Looking at this generic box with a pipe coming out and an associated connector, this example by the way can be exactly replicated for any duct or electrical connector, but what I'll just show you quickly is coming to a plan view, obviously in this case of this symmetrical unit using the flip arrows here provided, it's probably going to be sufficient to allow us to control the pipe placement on either side of this unit. If however we have something unsymmetrical, so if there was a control box on say this left side and we wanted to control the pipe work coming in either on the same or the opposing side as that control box. You can see that immediately using the flip arrows or our spacebar option doesn't really work because it's actually mirroring all of the geometry within the family. So one possible approach is if I come to the family itself. Something that may seem like a good idea is if I just select the geometry and reference planes associated to that pipe and we mirror it around the center and we start to apply a visibility parameter. So this one here can be our right pipe, this one here is our left pipe. and I load that back into the project. You'll notice that here, yes, we have a control over whether or not it comes in at the same or the opposing side as the control box. But you'll notice when I select the family, we still have this unused connector that is floating out in space. So this is not ideal. We typically would want the same amount of connectors as we have 3D pipe elements coming in and out of our family. So just quickly, I'm gonna show you the possible workflow to essentially achieve that and more. I'm going to delete these existing pipe elements and the first thing I'm going to do is create a reference line and I'm going to pick my start point as the intersection of our center left right and center front back. So these are both pinned and I'm going to draw out into space for the meantime. Then I'm just going to use the align tool and just tab through till I get the end of that reference line I've just drawn and lock that into place in both directions. If I select this reference line I've got this temporary dimension that I can then apply and give that a parameter. So I'll call this calc pipe length. This can be called anything and I'm just gonna group this under other so it's not in there with my other dimensions that I want to drive my unit height in size. So I then will apply, while I'm in the plan view, an angular dimension from my center left right to that same reference line and again, we're gonna associate a parameter here and we will add one called calc angle. And I'll also put that under other. So now we've got a reference line that's starting from the center of our unit and is being driven by an angle and a length. And the idea here is that we will start to associate 3D geometry and an associated connector to this reference line and be able to rotate it around our unit and have it lock in at 90 degree increments to give us essentially a pipe on any of these four sides. So if I come to a 3D view, you'll be able to see by default that that line wants to be posted to the reference level. I actually want this to be central to the height of my unit. And we can do that by coming to an elevation and you're gonna to want to draw a reference plane in the center of your height. So here I've obviously got an equalized reference plane and I've called this center elevation. It's important that you give that a name. Not only is it best practice in family creation to name your reference planes, just so you know what various planes are actually controlling and doing, it also lets us edit a work plane. And with that reference line selected, I can apply the center elevation. And you'll see that it updates to now sit in line with that reference plane. So back to my 3D view, and if I come to a wireframe, just so we are seeing this reference line in its entirety, what I'm gonna do is now create, and we're going to use a sweep in this case. I'm gonna pick a path and choose that reference line, and you can see that it automatically adopts the length and the angle. Select OK. Here we can select the profile, but I'm just going to go edit profile by sketch. And we're going to go circular, and selecting that center point and just drawing out here, I can then use my diameter dimension and associate the existing pipe diameter 
which is already living in the family being 32 millimeters and we can exit out of this. So now we have 3D geometry that's mirroring what this reference line is doing and you'll notice that because my reference line extends into be halfway into the width of my unit we are getting some interaction here. So what we can actually do is join these two elements so we start to get a termination at the edge of our unit which is probably what we would want to see. Coming back to my plan view and we can start to build in some formulas here. So firstly, I would just host the connector element. And again, this could be a duct connector or cable tray or pipe connector or electrical connector. In this example, I'm just gonna use a pipe connector and we'll associate again the existing pipe diameter to that. I'm going to want to associate some rules and formulas to these two calculated parameters and we've already got the left pipe and right pipe selected from that last iteration of this family. And I'm going to use those to drive what the angle is doing. So in this case, if the left pipe, which is essentially over this side on the screen, on the left of the screen, then our angle is going to want to be 90 plus 180 to give us 270. Otherwise, we'll say 90. And our pipe length is essentially a factor of our width of our unit plus our pipe length, which this pipe length is essentially stipulating the extension beyond the face of the unit. So this is going to end up being width divided by two plus pipe length. And you'll see that automatically updates. And if I load this back into the project, you'll see that we now not only have a single connector element to correspond to the single pipe geometry that's coming in or out of this unit, but we also have the ability to using the same yes no parameters to essentially rotate that around and we can very easily add in the ability to place this pipe element on the front or back faces. We would just need to make the formulas a bit more complex to allow for half length plus pipe extension instead of the width. But you can see by using reference lines and sweeps, we are able to do away with a lot of the problems that come from trying to manipulate the position and the orientation of MEP connectors in the Revit project space.